Hello all, welcome back to the Nursing Zone YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, we're gonna discuss about the topic called dermatophytes. So recently, uh, in 2024 itself, they have given this question in the examination uh, for BSc nursing students. So let's know about this condition. Dermatophytes are specialized filamentous fungi that are able to degrade keratin. So dermatophytes, these are a kind of fungal uh, fungus. So it can able to degrade the keratin, which is a protein in our body. So these are they are the causes of most fungal infections of the skin, hair, and nails. So these dermatophytes are able to uh, cause infections of the skin, hair, and nails. Three ecological groups of dermatophytes are distinguished. So mainly these dermatophytes can be distinguished or can be divided into three species. The first one is anthropophilic species whose natural habitat is man. So if a dermatophyte is causing infection in man means we call it as anthropophilic species. While in zoophilic the name itself is saying it causes infection in animals. And the next one is the geophilic species whose natural habitat is the soil. So uh, in soil it causes through soil it causes uh, uh, skin infection means we call it as geophilic dermatophyte species. So these are the three types or the causes of uh, dermatophytes or uh, we call the condition called dermatophytosis. So the cause is dermatophyte which is a fungus. Next one is background. So what is these uh, dermatophytes means fungal infection that can affect skin, hair and nails that means it is affecting integumentary system. A group of filamentous fungi require keratin for growth so it degrades the keratin also known as dermatophytes or tinea. One of the most common causes of superficial fungal infections usually you will get the uh, skin diseases like ringworm infection and all so or some allergies some kind of allergies for the foot or the, some for scalp or in the genital areas we will get some uh, skin allergies or skin infections. So these are the superficial fungal infections which is caused by these dermatophytes. So what are the risk factors of getting this uh, dermatophytes means who has decreased immune response and who are children and elderly people and who has diabetes mellitus and who has poor circulation and who, who are using corticosteroids and all for longer period. So they are prone to get this dermatophytes infection. Next one clinical features. How can we describe this condition? How can we inspect uh, signs and symptoms of this condition? Means it varies depending on the infectious organism or affected area and the severity of the infections. So depending upon the affected area that means uh, whether it affected the scalp or hands or any uh, that means limbs or any genital areas. Uh, or any uh, sun exposing areas and all depending upon the affected area and the depending upon the microorganism and also the severity of the infection we conclude the signs and symptoms. Most infections tend to be superficial and localized to be a specific part of the body. So these dermatophytes are limited to particular site and also they are superficial they won't invade into the skin so they are superficial. So these are the types. The first one is tinea captis, tinea facei, tinea barbae, tinea corporis, tinea manum, tinea ungium, tinea cruris, tinea pedis. The first one is tinea corporis, also known as ringworm, typically presents with a round red itchy rash that has an inflamed scaly border. These lesions tend to grow in an outward pattern creating a characteristic ring like appearance hence the name ringworm. So usually uh, people uh, we have seen this infection in so many people normally we can see this uh, ringworm infection so what here they are saying means it is caused by the uh, tinea corporis uh, microorganism so how can we uh, describe this tinea corporis means it is round in shape red in color and also it is itchy rash so it causes itching and it has an inflamed scaly border it has a specified border also so this is how we can uh, tell this is tinea corporis the next one is tinea capitis. Uh, it can either be inflammatory or non-inflammatory. So it can cause itching or does not cause itching. 
or uh, inflammation means we know it causes a uh, redness pain and uh, swelling so we can see uh, these three things these three or four things in inflammation so it can be inflammatory or non inflammatory depending upon the causative agent inflammatory tinea capitis can present with a pus filled lump on the scalp that may leave a localized area of scarring and permanent hair loss so uh, here we can see inflammatory uh, tinea capitis where uh, the in, uh, the infected area uh, there is no hair growth that means inflammatory tinea capitis we can see a pus filled area when that pus filled area or the pus filled lump it uh, it evolve when that evolves when this uh, pus filled lump period evolves it leaves a localized area of scarring so we can see a scarring and permanent hair loss Next one is tinea facing. It affects the facial skin and can sometimes occur from direct spread of scalp infection. So, so through this tinea capitis, it spreads to it spreads to the face, causing tinea facy. So, it generally presents with a skin rash that worsens after skin sunlight exposure. So, if uh, if a pe if a person with a tinea facy infection, if he exposed to directly to the sun, means uh, this tinea facy infection worsens that means it may cause itchiness or uh, it may burns on the skin of the patient next one is tinea pedis the name itself is saying on the foot it causes so it's also known as athlete's foot presence with the areas of scaling as well as softening or and breaking of the skin in the spaces between the toes and soles of the feet so usually between the so between the toes and also soles of the feet it uh, this uh, tinea pedis infects next one is tinea manum can occur in the individuals with tinea pedis due to direct spreading of infection from feet to hands you, if if tinea pedis so what a patient does so if it if if it is causing itchiness uh, so what they will do so they they start to scratch this area so by using the hands so through that it spreads to the hands also then we call it as tinea manum it typically presents with a dry skin in the palms so we can see these palms having the dry skin and also skin uh, rash with inflamed scaly borders on the back of the hand so these areas are these areas become inflamed with a rash and scaly borders also we can see on the back of the hand that means this dorsum dorsal area we can see uh, rash with inflamed scaly borders next one is tinea ungium uh, dermatophyte nail infections or tinea ungium can cause white or yellowish discoloration of the nails as well as either thickened or brittle nails we can see brittle nails the, that means the 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 toe nails uh, it look like they are it look like they are about to fall off so it causes white or yellowish discoloration of the nails so we can see yellowish discoloration here this this thing we call it as tinea ungium next one is tinea barbae it affects the hair follicles and skin of the bearded individuals the, so people who have men who have beard so this tinea barbae affects the hair follicles and skin of the beard and also we can see increased redness scaling and pus filled lesions next one is tinea crurus or also known as jock itch an infection involving the genital pubic perineal or perianal skin caused by the pathogenic fungi so this tinea crurus what they will do means causes infection in the genital areas or pubic peri perineal or perianal areas so how can we diagnose this uh, dermatophytes from other skin conditions so diagnosis can be confirmed by additional diagnostic tests so how can we discriminate from other skin allergies or skin conditions means through direct microscope it is typically performed with a potassium hydroxide preparation that allows the branching filaments of the fungi to be seen under the microscope so uh, by using the microscope we will see the uh, fungi presentation so that we can diagnose this condition next one is woods light examination using ultraviolet light to detect areas of the green fluorescence that may be caused by certain types of dermatophytes so these dermatophytes will do some green fluorescence uh, when seen under the ultraviolet uh, lights so through this wood lights examination we can diagnose this condition next one is skin biopsy that means we will know we know that this uh, 
they will take the scratch they will do scratching or scraping of that uh, uh, this dermatophytic infection and they will observe under the the and they will observe further to diagnose next one is management how can we manage this dermatophytes so if if this dermatophyte is uh, mild so what they will do means they will use uh, the doctors uh, typically prescribe uh, topical antifungal such as clotrimazole ointments and all if if the topical treatments are unable to uh, treat treat it properly then they will order oral antifungals such as uh, terbinafine like uh, terbinafine medications and all so this is about the treatment diagnosis clinical features types and the definition of the dermatophytes so dermatophytes is nothing but uh, it is a skin infection caused by the fungus that are able to degrade keratin so they they these dermatophytes use the keratin of our body uh, for its growth so especially it has three types of causes anthropophilic zoophilic zeo zeophilic species so what are the risk factor means those who are diabetic who are elderly and children and those who have uh, decreased immune response and those who are using corticosteroids for a longer time we can see the clinical features so uh, by by saying these types we can form the clinical features so thanks for watching this video i hope you got the knowledge about the condition called dermatophytes thanks for watching do like share subscribe to this channel the nursing zone